All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Ariel Rivers, NACD's Director of Membership Engagement, and I'd like to welcome you to this Conservation Coffee. If you're just joining us, as a quick reminder, please try to keep oh yourself no. muted. All right, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm yeah. hearing some feedback from someone right now. Um, if all of you could please mute yourself as we're getting started, that'd be really helpful. Uh, thank you for joining us for this conservation coffee this afternoon. Oh, uh, we will be hearing from Amy Figgett, yeah, cool. NACD's Stewardship and Education the Coordinator. There we go. I think I've got it. <laughs> I'm multitasking, so I apologize to everyone. Um, so if you have not muted yourself, please do that now. Uh, we will hear from Amy Figgett, NECD's Stewardship and Education Coordinator, who's going to celebrate a variety of our programs and share some information as well about Stewardship Week that's happening later this month. So again, another reminder, please keep yourself muted throughout the discussion. After Amy provides some information, we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers as well. So you're welcome to put those in the chat if you'd like, or uh, um, we can work through a system where we pop you off mute and have you ask your question. But we'll We'll do it organized in whatever way we, we ask those questions. Um, one quick thing before we get started as well, I'd like to thank NACD's committee, uh, the District and Partner Relations Committee for organizing and proposing these sessions and um, suggesting content that may be helpful for our members. If you have any future ideas for coffees that you would like to um, suggest, or if you yourself would like to present, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to work with you on uh, getting that session going. Um, okay, so I think that's all of my introduction points for now, Amy, and I will pass it over to you to provide more of an introduction and, and get our program going. Okay, that sounds great. So um, I wanna start out real quick by letting everybody know I am working from home today and I do have pets. So if there's a disruption, I apologize in, event, in, in advance. I have several um, dogs in my house. And two of them are puppies that hear everything and two of them are very old and they hear nothing. So if we hear chaos shortly, I'm just going to keep on going through it um, and act like I don't hear it. So, you know, if you all want to giggle, that's fine. That's I totally understand. So um, the first thing that I want to do is just share quickly where you're going to find your resources. That I feel like is the priority because when you want to participate in Stewardship Week, you really want to know, okay, how? So I'm going to share my screen and quickly go over this. So on the NACD website, um, we should have that screen shared perfectly okay now. And do we see the website? Because now I can't see anything. Yep, it's showing. Okay, I'm looking on my phone. So on the NACD website, you're going to go to Marketplace to do your downloads. So right here, we are on Marketplace, and this is where we'll find our materials. We have giveaway materials, education materials. We've got this brand new product, which is our sticker rolls. We have t-shirts for Stewardship Week. We have the education boxes, and we'll go through those in a moment. And then we have the education materials that are free download. Everything we have is free download, but you can also order it this year as well in printed materials. So the items that we're going to have, first and foremost, is the most important. The star of the show is the education guide. The education guide is 86 pages. It's filled with primary, intermediate, and then advanced lesson plans. These lesson plans correlate with national standards as best we can. We can't narrow them down to each state, but other states are welcome to take those standards. And you're able to usually plug those in with your Department of Education, and it'll actually pull up the standards that match it in your state. So the education guide is kindergarten through eighth grade. And the main reason we start or stop at the eighth grade is because it's that's when we want to move them on into the Envirothon. So we want to raise these students up and then prepare them to go into the Envirothon once they go into high school, which is very exciting for them. And I'm, I'm participating in Envirothon next week, so I'm, I'm super excited about that. 
So the education guide, again, it's completely chock full of items. Now, when you click on this, you're going to be able to add it to your cart, check out, and you will receive a free download link. But I need to really press upon everybody on this call and anybody that you know that's not on this call or has anything to do with anything. If you have an NACDnet.net email address, you are likely going to get caught in a filter. We can't control it on our end, unfortunately. What we need you to do is just let us know. And we have a, a short little workaround where we just initiate an email between our stewardship mailbox and kind of back and forth so that we can circumvent that filter. But you just need to let us know if you don't receive your downloads, because again, it's not on our end. It's the servers that we have no control over, but we can get that to you. Um, I just forward it and then I CC myself. So we do have that here. If you are NACDnet.net and you don't receive your download, contact me. I will forward it with no problem. So that is your guide. And these are your kits, which is a sampling of everything a district needs to get themselves started on um, an education program. It comes in a nice little box. And then it has a lot of different materials in it. So your list of materials here, I won't read them all off to you. You're, you're able to find that and do that yourself just so we can save some time. Um, again, you can order printed materials this year. This is the list of items that we have available. I do ship them myself. So this is all the fun stuff that you can have for your education program. And there's descriptions right down through here. Easy breezy. Now let's talk poster contest. Um, a lot of folks are very excited about the poster contest this year. We've got new divisions and that is the braille poster contest and the additional assist. Now I do feel like I need to plug in what, how does a person who is blind or have low vision create a poster? I get that question every single day. You know, how are we supposed to know what it says in Braille? How are we supposed to know they can't see? How are they drawing a poster? Well, it's really simple. Students who are blind or have low vision will use a tactile product to make their posters. They may use cotton. They may use fabric. They may use old Easter grass, upcycle products, textured papers. There's a lot of ways that students that are blind or low vision can participate in an art class. And it's phenomenal to watch the students do that. Uh, what's secondly important about it is how are we going to get braille paper? And that's something that if you're not familiar with, don't feel embarrassed asking. Students who are in classes where they use braille will have a braille labeler a, a, available to them from the school. So braille labeler is just like the labeler we use and it actually prints out a braille label and then they're able to actually stick that onto their poster. I can read braille. I know everybody else out there cannot, or you know, not everybody can, but it's okay because I'm gonna put out a, a brailled, braille lettered, may the forest be with you always so that districts can see that and see that their braille writing is correct. Now there are different types of braille writing. So we're gonna try to cover everything but there's generally two major types used in, in the United States. So we'll cover both of those to make sure. Now, in order to have that contest and the additional assist poster contest, which is exactly what it says, it's additional assistance. So we don't call it special needs because it's not special needs. It just means these students need additional assistance. No matter what their ability is, no matter what their ability is, they may need additional assistance. And this gives them a division to compete in where they've had additional assistance, whereas previously the students who participated in our poster contest had to work alone. They could not have adult assistance. So now they can. And, and we don't put a tag on it. We don't put a name on it. We don't say, you know, this is for the special needs class because it doesn't necessarily mean it's for the special needs class. It simply means if you need assistance, then this is your category. Um, one example that I've used often is my nephew is 100% cognitively fine. However, he has consistent and constant tremors. He has to have assistance when he's writing or drawing. 
it may not look the same as a you know a different artist so this is a division for some some children who just need that additional assist so we are raising money to be able to have this contest um I did a, a very typical Amy, and when I created the contest, I put it out there and then said, hey, we have this now. And they're like, hey, we didn't budget for something new. And I said, it's okay. I'll make this happen. And they said, okay, well, we believe in you. You go do that. So this is our poster that we're having for our fundraiser for our Braille and additional assist poster contest. It is a beautiful ink block style poster. And you can be the proud owner of one of these. It's very lovely. It's 11 by 17 and that's shipped right to you. All proceeds will go to our poster contest. So if you purchase one of these, which were donated, then you can be a part of this wonderful inclusive movement. So back to the marketplace. The education materials this year, we have the social media toolkit, which communications just uploaded this week. We're really excited about that. And that's going to be for your stewardship week promotions on social media. There's both Facebook and Instagram. So we have the student journals, which are a lot of fun. They're black and white, easy to print. Students can use them, enjoy themselves and get a few giggles. We do have the activity mats. We have our plain blank booklet covers. Um, we just printed one of those today as an agenda for some folks that turned out really nicely. We have our bookmarks as always, which are really popular and rack cards available to promote your poster contest. We also have a PDF to help get you started for your presentations in your schools. We can't do regional presentations. It, there's just too many districts. So we have this to help the districts along. And same thing here, just with some graphics and then Tom's put together a nice conservation districts PowerPoint that's simplified and helps districts understand what is the poster contest and stewardship week all about. So then of course we have our stickers because everybody loves stickers. Um, again, all the previous free education materials and resources are available. We have school supplies and we have of course always our accessories. So we are at 312. I'll stop for just a second, Ariel, to see if there's anything that you needed to add that that may be a, a pressing question for Marketplace. No, I don't see any questions yet, Amy. Okay. All right. Well, we will. That is not the right. Sorry, that one's not correct. My computer is not super fast today because we've got storms here again today. So let's go on to our education hub. This is where you're going to find your information. Um, Stewardship Week information right here. This tells you all about Stewardship Week and the history of it. Some links out to the poster and photo contest, links out to resources. Why Stewardship Week? And then we have a list of ways that districts can get involved and celebrate. Some really easy, fun ways. This list is pretty comprehensive. It gives great ideas and it's all things that's not gonna cost you money. Now you have your material downloads here. You can download your materials and this brings you back out to that link. Your social media toolkit is available here as well and that will download for you. Your Stewardship Week proclamation, which I found out just yesterday that West Virginia has a plug and play um, proclamation website with the governor that you can just go to the governor's website and you just put your proclamation in and they review it, write it out on fancy paper and sign it and seal it and send it to you. So check your states. You may have that too. And then you can get um, stewardship, Soil and Water Stewardship Week proclaimed a holiday. So you also have your press release template, which we use really heavily here in my state, and your radio PSA. Um, lucky me, I have a close friend, and it's the same friend that makes our Black Stewardship t-shirts. He also runs a radio station um, of <clears throat> contemporary adult hits. Um, 
that, you know, people my age might listen to. And he was able to do our radio PSA. And I really love that. So let's scroll up. And again, this is Stewardship Week. Let's go back to our education hub. And let's scroll down and check contests. So the contest is where you're going to find the information for the poster and photo contest. There's a lot of questions and all of them are answered here. But if there's questions that aren't, you just let me know. Email me. I'm always pretty good to respond promptly, usually within sometimes a couple minutes, sometimes a couple hours. Um, this explains the new 2024 contest. Why? Um, it, it was actually inspired. The Braille poster contest was inspired by a student in Tuscola Conservation District. And they have celebrated all year long over this. They gave him a certificate. They've written articles about him. And he just took a chance that he wanted to be in this contest and he did it to the best of his ability. And it broke my heart that we didn't have a division for him to compete in. And, and you know, doubly um, important is I'm a special education teacher by background for blind, low vision, deaf, and hard of hearing. So why haven't we done that yet was my question. So I just went went for it. And the NACD was incredibly supportive. They were not only supportive, but the staff of NACD have promoted these programs and have really felt very, a lot of them have told me, you know, this is near and dear to my heart. I have a family member or I have a friend who has children, you know, that, that will be able to compete in these new contests. And that just really warms my heart. So we have done away with one rule that was kind of difficult for a lot of states and a lot of districts. And that was the paper, the mandatory paper size. This year, we do not have that mandatory paper size, but we do have a suggestion for affordable, good paper for this contest. And that is 60 pound, 11 by 17 inch. But you know what, if you have eight and a half by 11 copy paper, by all means, use it, whatever it takes to get the kids involved. That's what we want. So this gives information about the national prizes, and they're going to be listed right here, 200, 150, and 100. This is where we're going to submit. Now, I went ahead and put the link there because sometimes people aren't able to find it easily these are actually drop down boxes and a lot of people don't realize that and they call me and they're like it says entry instructions for local and state but there's nothing under it and that's why you got to hit that plus button that's something that candace and i've talked about and we're we're hoping to be able to make it a little more streamlined for folks in the coming years so this is where you'll understand how your local to state will work now that will of course vary state to state and that is because all states' needs are different, all states' rules are different, all state staff may be on different schedules. Some are finished with their poster contest already, some are just getting started, and some won't start for until August. So everything's at different paces, so you just kind of have to modify and, and make it easy for all. The one easy one-stop shop is to just click Submissions are Accepted Here. It's very important to know this is only for the state winners, only for the state winners. Now, the photography, which is what this link is, this should have linked out actually to the poster contest. So that was a food paw. Let's go down here. I apologize. So this is actually where we wanted to be. It looks the same. Um, this is where your poster contest entries are going to go. This is your state winners. So the association or whoever in your state auxiliary whoever runs your poster contest is going to upload them here. They're going to put that information in and then they're going to put their winners and they're going to be able to upload their documents there. And it's very easy to get your digital files. Any of you that have a smartphone, you can use the free scanner app that's already installed. That's in your notes section. You can take pictures if you need to, preferably a PDF works best. But if you can't scan to a PDF, we'll work it out. But that that does work best and makes it a little quicker. So this is where your digital file goes. And then you just hit submit. You want to make sure to do that before December the 1st. Because if it comes in December the 12th, I'm not accepting it. 
I'm a teacher. If your homework is late, you're getting a zero. I don't deduct points. I don't even accept it. That's because we have a whole nation full of people that are really focused on this and are really doing their best. And I don't think that it's fair that they're scrambling to get it in by December 1st for other people to be like, yeah, I'll just turn it in whenever. Again, the teacher says there will be nothing accepted after the date that it is cut off. You've got until midnight that night. So if you got to stay up late, I guess you're going to have to stay up late. And if your dog eats your homework, I want a picture of the dog with the homework. I might want to pet its ears. So anyway, this is where you're going to upload your posters. Now back again to the photo contest that is open to the public. That may or may not change in the future as more districts become involved. But we're going to go here to the photo contest. And this is the practices that are accepted and the entry instructions. And again, we'll go to the entry form. And here's the photographer's name. Now, again, this is open to the public. So you can certainly turn them in at a state level, but also just know that there are teachers and other individuals across the United States that are also submitting and they're, they're not mandated to be sent in at a district level. So we'll close out of that. And again, all of this, I should probably sign out over here. All of this is gone now. Since I signed out in the education hub. And you'll also find your curriculum, your pollinator guide, partner classroom resources, and the conservation careers workshop. I don't personally work in the conservation careers workshop, so I can't speak to that behalf. But any of the other items, I can certainly help you with. And with that, I will open up for any questions about the poster contest since we've got just under 10 minutes. Amy, I'm not seeing any questions yet in the chat box, but I'm wondering, um, you know, with your experience, if you could share, this is fantastic resources, but for a district that might be new to the, the poster contest or might be new generally to NACD's education resources and hub, you know, what sort of um, inspiring words do you have to share or um, guidance to maybe uh limit some of the intimidation they might be feeling in, in kind of diving in? So I think for that question, it's important for each person that's out there working in the districts to know that I spent 20 years working in a district. So I know exactly where you're at and I know where you're coming from and where you're trying to go. So my suggestion is little bites, take little bites. Um, the way that I started mine out many years ago was I started with one grade just one grade across my county, because in my county, we have 53 elementary schools. So I started with third grade. And as I got a better handle on it, I brought it to third grade and fifth grade. That way, as the students transitioned into their grades, those that were starting kindergarten would get it in the third grade, and then they would come back to it in the fifth grade. So if you need to start little with just one grade level, that's fine. You don't have to take on every grade level all at once. And my next suggestion is there's prize money. Um, not everybody has the cash laying around to pay out prize money. We do have inexpensive ribbons. I can send you fillable certificates. Certificates, especially at the high school level, are equally as important, maybe not to the students as cash, but it's important for those students' portfolios. Whether they are in public, private, or homeschool, they still have to have portfolios. Every student does. Um, many of you already know, I still teach high school in the evenings. Um, two days a week, I teach advanced robotics. Those kids will do anything for a certificate. Um, and that just basically shows the achievement, the participation, not the same as a participation trophy, but but they're actually participating in community reach and, and outreach. So that's my suggestion is start small, contact me. I can give you an idea based on where you're at of what will work for you. That's what I'm here for.
I mean, that's really helpful. Um, and, you know, just thinking as well about uh, what stewardship week might look like for specific districts and um, how they might promote it or get the word out or even get started. Can you maybe um, give us a rough idea of how you would potentially do it in a district? Would you start looking at the materials, then download them, kind of go through those first? Then how would you get the yep. word out? You know, what's what's the process kind of look like around stewardship week? So the first thing that I would do in a district is I would go ahead and download the programs I, or I would download the written pages, um, depending on which district you're in, you might be able to send links to your board, but a lot of them want to see that piece of paper at their table when they're in their board meeting. I would print that out and educate first and foremost, educate your fellow board members or your board, depending on where you're at in the district educate them on what it is, because that's where you have to start. You have to start with that board making the decision to participate in the promotion of Stewardship Week and to be a part of it. Once you have your board on board, which really isn't difficult because they're going to love this, then you go in and you can look at what materials are available that you can get your reach into the public. Any Some have outreach individuals, some do not. If you don't have an outreach team or an educator or you are trying to balance the administrative duties plus some outreach, reach out to local schools. Reach out to local scouts, 4-H, FFA, um, junior master gardener, after school, those groups that are, again, small bites. If you can't take on a school of 400 students, you can probably take on a scout troop of none or maybe 20. Start small. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. The reason we have these materials is to make it easy for you to advertise for your own district. All of our materials can be customized to the district. Like the rack cards, they have a spot on the back where you're just gonna put a label over it with your district name and number and contact. We're serving you not ourselves. We're not serving NACD to promote NACD in Stewardship Week. We're creating product for you, the district to use to promote yourselves to your community. We are not stepping over you and promoting it for you. So I'm here to learn your need because everybody's need is different. All you have to do is send me an email or call me that's all you have to do. And I'll learn the need of your community through you. And then it's my job to help you find a way to reach. So it's a very individualized service. I don't think there's a one, one stop shop for it. I think it's very individualized and it may seem like a lot, but the workload is what it is. I'm here to, to help you. All right. That's super helpful, Amy. And um, we have uh, so we have one more question. I was going to cut it off, but okay. I do think this is a good question <laughs> uh, because I think it invites a little bit more dialogue about what education looks like um, for a district or outreach in general. So we have a question from Megan, uh, which is, you know, is the goal to run a program during stewardship or perhaps throughout the year? And I think that's a that's a great opportunity to to kind of point to some other resources that are available through NACD as well. So. As far as um, celebrating through the year, just celebrating Stewardship Week, I've always made it a habit of celebrating through the whole year, the theme for the whole year, the practice for the whole year. Some start in August and end at Stewardship Week. Some kick off at Stewardship Week. It's really based on the need of your community and the involvement and the willingness to participate from your conservation district. Uh, again, everybody's needs are different. You may live in a rural community, you may be in an urban community, and you may be able to go into the schools easier in one and not so much the other. I think that year round is the perfect way to go personally, but it's a lot, especially if you're a one person conservation district, administrative outreach, education, everything person some are some districts have have that capability and not others do so when they don't i always tell them to lean on their association and their fellow districts for help 
That's super, a great, great point, actually. Super um, important to know as our last point on this conversation coffee. So uh, as a reminder, these coffees are meant to just be short, introductory, um, you know, ideas, uh, networking opportunities, et cetera, for all of our uh, members, as well as to connect all of our members to staff. So we've included uh, the stewardship email address in the chat box, as, as Amy mentioned, she is a resource available to all of you. So if you are new to the program, have more questions, feel free to reach out to her or anyone on NHCD's team if you have specific questions about other membership services beyond stewardship and education. Keith Owen, our Director of Education, has also been jumping in in the chat and offering some guidance as well. Uh, so with that, like I said, these are meant to be short half hour clips. So I am going to cut off the discussion here, but um, feel free to reach out to any of us at any point in time to continue the discussion and network with each other, learn from uh, others in your state or beyond as well about how they might run their programs so that you can see examples of successes uh, in neighboring states or counties that, that you can potentially glean information from as well. So thank you for joining us. Um, please share this information widely within your home district and state as well. And feel free, like I said, to reach out to any of us if you have any additional questions. Thank you so much, Amy, for the, the discussion today mm -hmm. as well. Thank All you. Right.